In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to start advertising on Facebook. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael Tandich. I own a marketing agency along with some other businesses like an accounting firm. I also have a free weekly newsletter called The Midweek Marketer where I give away one actionable marketing strategy that I'm utilizing in my businesses and in my clients' businesses. If you'd like to sign up for that, click the link in the description below. All right, so in order to talk about how to start advertising on Facebook, you need to understand what advertising on Facebook means and what it's not. I see a lot of people mess this up when they're trying to learn how to start advertising on Facebook. And that first thing is it's not boosting a post, not boosting. The reason I'm saying this is it's very easy to, when you're starting out on Facebook ads, to look at your Facebook page or your Instagram page and say, oh, I can just boost this post. The problem with this is that people end up just spending a bunch of money on likes, on engagement, on comments, on shares, on all this stuff. And as a business owner, those things are good. And if you utilize them correctly down the road in your marketing and advertising, they can be a really good thing. However, right now, when you're starting out on Facebook ads, you want to make sure that every dollar you spend as a business owner is green. And what I mean by that is you spend a dollar and you get two or three or four or five out of that dollar that you spend on Facebook ads. And so boosting a post on Facebook doesn't do that for you. What it does do is it makes it feel good. It makes it look like you're getting a bunch of engagement on your post, which is, again, just makes you feel good. But as a business owner, it's not, you can't pay the bills in feeling good. You pay the bills in dollars. And in order to make money, you have to make sure you're running Facebook ads the proper way. All right, so in order to do that though, you need to have a business manager account. So a Facebook ads business manager account, business manager. Now this business manager account allows you to basically hook up your Facebook page, your Facebook page, your Instagram page, Instagram, IG page and hook them all together and then also hook up your ad manager together with that. So ad manager. Okay, so that's the first thing. You need to make sure you have your business manager account set up. The third thing is you wanna make sure you then set up your ad manager account properly. Put in your credit card, hook it up to your ad, your business manager, and make sure that you have it all set up and ready to go for when you start running ads. After you have your Facebook page, Instagram page, ad manager all hooked together, the next thing that you wanna do is make sure you put a pixel on your website. Here's why this is super, super important. Remember what I said about boosting posts and, and I said, you know, boosting posts just increases engagement, increases your likes, all that stuff, but you can't pay the bills with feeling good. This pixel is what helps with that. The pixel goes on your website, so it's a line of code that goes into the header code of your website. If you don't know how to put that in, ask your developer, or I run a marketing agency. If you'd like us to run Facebook ads for you, click the link in the description below to fill out the form. But what you do is you put that pixel into the header, and you also put the pixel on the conversion action. So what that means is that if someone purchases something for, from you, it goes on the thank you page. With Shopify, if you have Shopify or WordPress, um, you just put the code in and it auto figures that out for you so you don't have to develop a bunch of stuff to do it. Or another way of doing it too is you want to be able to, like I said, track when someone hits that thank you page. So whether they've purchased a product or they filled out a lead form, once they hit that thank you page, they get the pixel shoots back to Facebook ads saying, hey, someone completed the conversion action. So Again, another way to do that with the pixel is within the events manager and ad manager, you can go and select the page and say, hey, whenever someone hits this URL, shoot that information back to Facebook ads and say that it was a conversion. So making sure that you have your pixel set up correctly is super, super important. Again, like I said, use the events manager to be able to track and see, hey, someone went to this page, someone filled out this form, hit the thank you page, do it yourself, and the events manager will showcase to you if it's working properly. And the reason, again, that this is super, super important is you wanna make sure that every dollar you put in, you're getting green dollars back. So two, three, four, five dollars back. I recently had a client where we came in, they had spent thousands of dollars getting leads for their business. And they had a, thousands of emails on their leads and they were getting you know leads for 50 cents. And that's great, sounds good. However, they had never run an ad campaign in their ad manager for a purchase conversion action. So they had never said, hey, Facebook, track this to make sure someone purchases. And the issue with that is that they spent basically thousands of dollars and they got a bunch of leads, 
But when we looked into all the data, no one had actually converted. So what we did was we built out their Facebook ads, built out their campaigns properly, built out their content properly, set up their pixel properly, and we ended up getting a bunch of sales off of this one ad campaign that we ran for them. We spent 500 bucks and we brought in about 40 sales, all of it in the green for them. And it was the first time they've ever made money off of running Facebook ads. So make sure you have that pixel set up properly so that you can track if you're actually making money or not. Cause it's all about making money. That's the whole point we're in this. The fifth thing on how to start advertising on Facebook is understanding your target market. Now this kind of gets into a little bit of marketing. I have a whole video on this. I'll link in the description below, but you need to understand who your target market is. So who is the person that I'm speaking to or who's the person that I'm trying to get to fill out this lead form or purchase my product or service? I need to fully understand who they are, how old they are, what gender they are, where they live, where things they're interested in. The reason being is this allows you to then speak to their pain points, speak to things that they're interested in, easily catch their attention. Watch my video on target markets. It'll break this all down for you, but you need to fully understand that before continuing on on how to start advertising on Facebook. Otherwise, you're just gonna kind of burn money and it's gonna kind of be pointless for you. Okay, the next thing on how to start advertising on Facebook is figuring out what your offer is. Offer. Now, this could be a discount. This could be a buy one, get one. This could just be a time sensitive thing. There's a bunch of different things that you can do in your advertising to get someone to convert, right? So if you say, hey, 10% off, but you have to purchase by Friday, or you could say, we're only accepting five spots, but you have to sign up by Friday. Or, hey, this event is happening on Friday. Click the link in the description below to sign up for it. There's a limited amount of spots. You can create that urgency for people within your offer. And then you have to also figure out, obviously, what your offer is in itself. So is it just selling your product? Is it just selling your service? Is it a free offer? So you're just trying to bring in leads, but after the leads, they actually convert into a purchase. So maybe it's like a webinar and they sign up for the webinar for free, but then they actually purchase from the webinar. I would highly recommend that no matter what your offer is, whether it's paid or free, it always ends in somehow them giving you money. Otherwise, again, what's the point in doing all this? All right, the next part is your content, right? So what does your content look like? Content. A couple different things when it comes to your Facebook ad content. One, if you have current clients, ask them for video testimonials. These always crush with Facebook ads. I know there's a bunch of people out there that are like, hey, don't utilize UGC videos anymore. They don't work, they're dead. Whenever I utilize them for our clients, always work out really well. Reason being is it creates that social proof for you. Basically what social proof is, is it showcases the pe new people like, hey, someone's already been down this path. They've already figured this out. They've already gone through all the pitfalls and said they had a good experience. So there must not be any pitfalls. It must not be that hard of a path. And I'll probably have a good experience if I do this. So utilizing testimonial videos from current clients is a really good way to get Facebook ad content, especially if you don't want to be in front of a camera or you creating your own videos or anything like that. Getting these testimonial videos is a great way to go ahead and get content for your videos. Another thing you wanna make sure you do with all your Facebook ads is you wanna have some kind of hook, right? So this could be someone jumping in the frame, someone catching your attention, a bright colored shirt, something to stop them from scrolling. Then you wanna qualify them, so qualify. You need to basically call out who they are. Are you a coach? Are you a business owner that's making half a million dollars a year? Are you a chiropractor that is struggling to bring in leads? Qualify them. You want to make sure that you basically call out who they are. That's why it's super important to understand who your target market is, because then you can qualify them in your ad. And then the last thing is hitting them with your offer in the video. So hey, Friday, if you sign up, by then you get 10% off or whatever it's going to be. Hook, qualify, offer. The also with your offer, it doesn't always have to be a discount or a time urgency thing or something like that. It can just be like, hey, check out my product, but it solves your pain point so well that you don't need a discount, you don't need any of that kind of stuff. So hook, qualify, offer. Okay, now I'm gonna get into the really good stuff and showcase to you guys what most other YouTubers don't showcase to you. And that is the campaign structure. So this is how I break down my Facebook ad campaigns. There's a couple different ways you can do it, but this is one of them. So first thing is you have your main campaign. 
You could do a daily budget, right? Daily budget or a lifetime budget. Lifetime. I like to do a lifetime budget on the full campaign. Another way you can do it too is you can do, let's break down all your ad sets. So ad set, ad set, ad set. You could also then have ad set spend for each specific ad set. It's another thing you can test. I just like having campaign lifetime spend on there. The reason I do this is for clients that, hey, we only wanna spend $10,000. Okay, boom, we're only spending $10,000. If they give me a daily budget, then I'll switch to that. But I always like to go lifetime, that way I know exactly what's being spent. Okay, ad set. And also side note, I know I'm gonna get a ton of crap from Facebook ad people if they're watching this video on oh, no, that's not the proper way to do it, whatever. That's how I do it. It's how it works really well for my clients and for my businesses. Test, figure out what works really well for you. I just always end up doing the lifetime budget for my campaign. Okay, so now here you have your ad sets. Ad sets. I typically, what I like to do is I like to test the ad sets based off of just being broad. So Facebook ads used to be like, hey, I can go and put specific interests. So I can say, hey, my one target market is you know, interested in homes. My other target market is interested in Lamborghinis and my other target market's interested in koalas. I don't know, I'm just being crazy. The point is, is that you used to be able to have ad sets on specific interests and then all your ads underneath. Now, they've pretty much gotten rid of majority of interest targeting and you have to just keep your ad sets broad. So have your ages, all that kind of stuff. But that's why it's super important going back to the content to have a hook, qualify, because now, in order to qualify people, you have to do it in your content, not in your targeting. Okay, so you have your ad sets. In each ad set, I would have about four ads, depending on your budget. Now, going back to campaign budget spend, if you have $1,000 to spend, cool. Test in between two to three ad sets. If you have like 200 bucks to spend, uh, test like one ad set. The more money you have, the more it can get spread out through all the ads and test different things. The less money you have, the less testing you can do to be efficient. You have to kind of look at it as like, if I have one, two, three, four, eight, 12 ads, that means I'm gonna be 12 divided by $1,000 is, you know, 80 bucks. So I have 80 bucks towards each ad when I first start out. However, if you have like 200 bucks divided by 12, that's like 16 bucks, so it doesn't go as far. Under each ad set, you have all your ads. Okay, each ad set, I like to test different creative. So in here, I would do like user generated content. So these are testimonial videos. These are videos that I've created. And then these are graphics, graphics. This is how I like to test it out. So I'm testing out by content piece. So I'm testing out, hey, do videos work really well with my target market? Do UGC videos work really well with my target market? And rotate those in. If I'm finding that the graphics aren't doing that great, okay, then we're nix that ad set and we focus then on just the videos. If I'm finding UGC videos aren't doing that great, I nix that. And I'm going into my videos and I go, okay, this video is doing really well. This one's the second best, this one's third, and this one's fourth. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the fourth, add a fifth one in, and start testing that one. And then I start testing out the content pieces within that ad set. Another key point that I wanna go over for this video on how to start advertising on Facebook is don't just completely cut off the ones that are doing horrible. They almost have to be like sacrificial lambs for whatever reason with Facebook. And what I mean by that is if you have four ads and three of them are doing really well and you go to cut off the fourth, it ends up being that like the third ad ends up crapping out and not doing that well. However, if you leave the, leave the fourth one, first three end up working really well still and the fourth one just kind of peters out. It's really weird. There always needs to be like, it, it seems as if there always needs to be like one ad or a couple ads that suck in order for all the ads to work really well. You can never really get into a spot where it's like you only have perfect ads running. Obviously, super vague, just kind of experiences that I've seen when running Facebook ads. I've run hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Facebook ads. So just something to note when you're running your Facebook ads. But this is essentially how I break out my campaigns. Now, from here on, what you need to basically do is just constantly be testing. And then if you want, if you're finding that your ads are doing really well, I would increase your budget by about 15% every two days every two days. So by doing that, you're not freaking out the algorithm and saying, oh my gosh, they're trying to dump a bunch of money in. You're not going fully back into the learning phase, but 15% every two days I find is a really good spot. I like to try and start with my budget campaign higher. So if I'm like willing to spend a thousand dollars, just spend a thousand dollars right off the bat because spending $200 and then building 15% every two days just takes time. 
and you might as well just jump right in at the thousand. So uh, recommend if you're trying to scale 15% every two days. So this is the complete breakdown on how to start advertising on Facebook. If you have any questions whatsoever, just leave them in the comments below. I try to get back to everyone that comments. If you'd like to get one actionable free marketing strategy every single week through my newsletter called The Midweek Marketer, click the link in the description below. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video and I will see you in the next one.